I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. Well, we're back in Arizona. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the first episode we filmed here. Um, we're moving into day two of the trip, um, and this is actually gonna be day two and day three, and even a little bit of the morning of day four. So, uh, you know, expectations are high after putting 14 coyotes in the truck. You know, that's, you know, second best ever we've ever put on camera. Um, so yeah, the coyotes were coming in great the first day, so we're anticipating the coyotes to, to continue to come in great uh, for the rest of the trip. So the one thing about coyote calling and, and having your areas that you've hunted before, you have to be flexible. Um, you know, the wind directions usually, you know, it might be the same whenever you go out, but there's a lot of times that it might be 180 degrees different. So knowing the access, um, knowing where the routes are, knowing, you know, where the cover is, where you think the coyotes are, and being able to get in from different directions um, is important. You're essentially calling the same area, you're just calling it from different sides. And, um, you know, the first morning, that was the case. Normally in, pa in the past when we've hunted this area, it's been a south wind, well it was a northeast wind. So we had to move, maneuver around a little bit, make a few adjustments, uh, but we put together a good plan and uh, you know, we're hoping that uh, the coyotes were cooperating. Well, might as well go back to the hotel. What? So we might as well go back to the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna stick to that sound sequence today. Just for the chance of a cat, you know. And then pup, I don't think pup was making any, any big difference yesterday anyway, you know. You know, when I hunt Nebraska, we, we, you know, we don't have a lot of bobcats. We do have some, but not enough where I ever really focus on them. Usually if we kill one, it's by accident in the first couple minutes of the stand, we just happen to set up right on it. But when you're in country like we're hunting, where you have the chance of a bobcat or a coyote, uh, I really try to shy away from the coyote sound, coyote based sounds. And what I mean by that are the pup distresses, the coyote fights, because as soon as you turn something like that on, a bobcat's gonna you know, probably turn around and, and leave. So um, my, my game plan is to play a series of prey distress sounds across the spectrum. You know, maybe some of the louder rabbits, some of the squeakier rabbits, maybe and throw some bird in there, maybe play each one for two, three, four minutes, switch to the next sound, you know, and we're gonna sit there 10 or 12 minutes to see what shows up. Well, that's bobcat calling for you. I saw that bobcat at about 60, 80 yards early on in the stand, and I went through about seven different prey distress sounds for it to come that last maybe 30 yards and just takes the right one. I was going through Tweety Bird and Rodent and Rabbit and you name it, you know. And he got right down here in this brush. We just couldn't break him. He was only about 10 yards out in front of the call, maybe 30 yards. Dustin hit him pretty good a couple different times. I'm sure he's dead down there. 
Looks like maybe he found him. So I'll show you guys a quick little tip on these swaggers that not a lot of people know about. These rubber end caps, you can actually pull them off. And then you got a metal spike underneath there. And therefore, like, I'm sitting on this slopey, gravelly hill. These rubber ones slide, but now I'll be able to stick those into the dirt a little bit. And it'll hold. You can also use it on, like, icy, frozen ground. Those spikes work pretty good as well. Did the call turn off or did you shoot it? All right, go, go see. <laughs> Never fails, we're in Arizona and Dustin's gotta freaking get him right at the call. We knew that was gonna be good. The coyote's coming, the wind's blowing this way. We set it up perfect. The coyote had no clue we were here. I just hope he didn't put a whole bunch of pellets in it. Well, that was pretty badass. Now we gotta go back and get the other call out. So this call's malfunctioning now. Uh, it's not getting signal. Even though it works, everything else works for some reason. The 15 pellet holes in it, something's wrong with it. So I'm gonna switch out. We're gonna use Supervolt now. Um, just wanna show you how easy this is. So um, I'm just swapping out the battery, putting the lithium pack back in it. It drops down in there. Now. I have a, my own SD card that has all my folders and stuff on it, so I'm just gonna pull that out of the Revolt. I'm gonna take this other one out of the Super Revolt and pop mine in there. And then I'm gonna turn this call on and turn this on and then it'll update the, uh, the sound card to the remote on the way to the next stand. pretty much have all the advantage on this stand. Wind's blowing right to left. Doesn't set up right on the call. Sun's blaring in the coyote's eyes. We're tucked into the shadows here. Got a big bottom here full of thick grass. Thick brush. Should be a coyote laid up down in here. Well, that played out just how we wanted it to, man. Coyote came from the upwind half. When I talk about these stands, I'm really always looking for like 180 degrees of area where we haven't walked through, we haven't drove through it, the wind's not blowing in, and that's exactly what we had across this big bottom.
So when you spot a bobcat out there, uh, a lot of times they're real cautious. They'll stalk the call like you and I would stalk an antelope or an elk or a deer. They're going to use the cover. They're going to be sneaky. Um, and, and that's exactly what these bobcats do. So when you catch one out there that's checked up, you know, if you don't quite have a shot at it, a lot of times you can just circulate through a bunch of different squeaky sounds. And a couple of these bobcats we called in, that's what I had to do, you know, to get them from 60 yards to right at the call was, you know, go through, you know, one of Rick's new sounds called Baby Meat Rabbit. Played it for a little bit, kind of watched that cat's reaction. If nothing happens, I would switch to a sound called Tweety Bird. Let that play, nothing would happen. Um, maybe to Baby Cottontail and Mize, nothing would happen. Lip squeaks, and finally you'll hit one of those sounds that the cat's really gonna like, and you'll see them kind of perk up and they sneak in. foot from the call, baby. <laughs> get him, you know? Yeah. Can get this grass running. Dude, that's about as close as you can let a bobcat get to a call. <laughs> awesome, man. That's an awesome cat. Once again, we're in cat country, so I haven't, I didn't play any pup distress on that. Just a, a series of three different prey distress sounds. Um, about eight minutes in, you know, that cat was somewhere up, who knows, up in there, but. Awesome. Great way to end the day, man. We finally connected on the last stand. Long afternoon for that. If you followed the last stand very long, <laughs> you know, we've killed probably in at a three of three and a half years of filming. I can count probably on one hand the number of times we've actually killed a coyote on the last stand of the day. So it's always awesome when that happens. Moon coming up. That was just picture perfect there, man. So our third day of the hunt, we have a new area lined up, a place we never hunted before. Um, we get in there and it's just, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck kind of a day, we wouldn't have any luck at all. It just seemed like the coyotes would, would start from right downwind. Um, you know, a lot of times when you make a stand, you have 180 degrees of area out here, the wind's going one of those directions and you're hoping the coyotes just aren't down there. And a couple different times, the coyotes just were down where the wind was going, you know, it was just kind of unfortunate. We had a couple other instances where it was pretty flat and we tried to get the truck hid the best we could um, and coyotes were coming into the call and they saw the truck and once a coyote sees the truck, usually they peel out and head the other way. So, um, but last part of the day, we thought, you know what, let's go try to salvage the day and head back to the area we killed 11 coyotes on the first afternoon. We're 0 for 3 this morning so far. Lucky horseshoe. It's gonna change all the luck. Bonus. Only thing better than one is two. <laughs> oh, it's gonna change now. Mm -hmm. 
finally got into the spot we were wanting. It's our sixth stand of the morning. Just all kinds of cover in here, tall grass, brush, little draws. Within an 800 yard half circle of us, there's tons of cover and that's what you want. The more that cover within that, that radius, the better your odds are gonna be of calling in a coyote. Yeah, yeah, they definitely weren't together. It was a couple minutes later. That's so why even a shotgun down, you know, a lot of people think, ah, oh, you know, it's pretty loud, but man, this cover muffles these sounds and, you know, the call's blowing that way too, you know, so, yeah, you keep going. Well, it's not quite how we had it planned out. <laughs> you know, when we were coming into this stand, we had a northeast wind, and we thought, okay, this is gonna be great. We got into this pocket. We were actually gonna sit over on that side of the opening and have the wind and everything out in front of us. But once we got here, then all of a sudden it was like a east wind or a west wind swirling around. So we decided, okay, let's go over here. A lot of times when I'm doing this, the wind's swirling, I'll get the call way out from us. That, that's way past shotgun range. You know, when normally when we're hunting sh shotgun coyotes, we don't put it that far. But really what we were hoping for is the coyote would come out in this opening out there 80, 90 yards and we could woof him and get him to stop and get him killed with the rifle. We didn't anticipate it <laughs> coming like what, five yards behind you? Coming from the area we originally were going to call to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if the wind would have been perfect and he would have came, that would have been just ideal. But, uh, you know, sometimes all you can do is just make sure you can get everything covered and kill them when they come in. And luckily we had enough openings there to get him whacked. Even Jump. when it's a rifle stand, you hope <laughs> So it's our last morning of the hunt. Um, we make about a two hour drive to hunt an, an area we've never hunted before. Uh, one of the ranchers we know down here told us about this spot and uh, he told us how pretty it was and how just like a whole different planet down here. So we decided to, to make a run and sure enough, we pull into this valley and it's just gorgeous. Uh, it didn't even feel like we were in Arizona. It felt like almost like South Dakota or, or Montana or somewhere like that. Well, that's a good start to the morning. Stand we never made before ever. It's kind of
and looked at everything, wind direction, where we could hide the vehicle, the cover, these factors of, of cows, there were some coyotes howling, it all worked out. Slow trotting coyote, not, uh, not the hard chargers we've been seeing all trip, but nonetheless, we had some visibility, and I finally got to shoot one with the rifle. Dustin didn't get to shoot it with the shotgun, I like it. You know, I always like to give you guys a little bit of a back look of what our setups look like because the setups are important, you know, and it was crucial on that one. If we weren't set up right, he'd have busted us. And, oh, yeah. But you can see there was two trees and, and shadows. You know, we were tucked up into the trunks of those trees, so when he did look up the hill, you know, we weren't skylined and we were also sitting in the shadows. He knew we were up there, I think. He knew something wasn't right, but, but uh, you know, we were tucked in well enough. And it was only about a 30-yard shot right down the hill right here to where Dustin buried him. The gray fox stand was pretty cool because it was actually a double on that stand and we called in a coyote, killed the coyote, and then we called in the gray fox with a pup distress. I believe it was Sid kicking ass three. And that's something that you don't see every day, but that gray fox came in a couple minutes after the coyote, after we had that one killed. Well, we got a gray fox, coyote double. We got a little greedy on, I knew the word wind was, I told myself when we sat down, I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna bark everything because the wind's swirling and then that one came so per I'm like, let's give it a shot. And then he got right there, just, just five, yeah. five, ten more feet up over that and you'd have raked him, but. <laughs> those straightaway shots, I'm telling you, out of all the running shots I make, those are the most nerve wracking because they're not always going perfectly. They're always just a little bit of a snake in them, you know, and that one I was just, ah. Well, man, another Arizona trip coming to an end. That was a lot of fun, man, a lot of fun. Personal record, 26 kills Good one. in a filming trip, you know. 24 was our record from a couple years ago. You know, when we're bringing you guys these videos, you know, we're trying to trying to knock it out, you know, a couple episodes in, you know, what, two, three days of hunting. You know, we hunted three full days and oh, about five stands this morning. So it was good while it lasted, but now we got like a 16 hour drive home. Lots of memories to talk about. That's for sure, man. Good times. You know, there was a lot of crazy things in this episode. Um, you know, Dustin shooting the call, Bobcats right at the call, 
running coyotes with a shotgun. Uh, man, it, it, just a lot of crazy good stuff. A coyote and a, and a gray fox on the same stand. Just stuff you're not going to see all the time. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, more great stuff to come later this season, so stay tuned. And as always, you know, this is a YouTube series, so, you know, be sure and leave some comments. I jump on there quite a bit. Um, if you have some questions about some of the gear, some of the tactics you saw in this episode, you know, ask us a question. I'll get on there and answer it. Um, and if you're looking for more tips and tactics, um, I just started a podcast called Eastman's Predator Pros. Uh, you can find it on the SoundCloud app, uh, iTunes, and uh, Google Podcasts. So um, Dustin and I will be, be on a podcast here soon talking about, you know, a lot more of the details and the, and the finer things of this hunt. Um, so if you're interested in uh, podcasts and learning more about calling coyotes, check it out.